I probably don't have to explain what Raid Shadow Legends is at this point. If you're on YouTube, you already know what this is, right? It's this epic new game with console-like graphics and immersive gameplay. Honestly, it's probably the best and most expansive marketing campaign we've seen in YouTube's history. Seriously, props to their marketing team. They have funny ads that play before videos, and as I'm sure you've seen, they're notorious for having in-video advertisements. Basically where they pay creators to say a few good things about the app in the middle of their usually unrelated video. However, Raid has a sinister side that nobody seems to be noticing. Yes, their ads are annoying, that's for sure, but I'd go as far as to say that they're predatory. These ads are exploiting YouTube's audience on a scale that I have never seen before, and I don't think YouTube has ever seen before, and nobody's doing anything about it. Now, I realize this makes me sound dramatic, so let me explain. Today, I'll unveil the sinister truth about Raid Shadow Legends. Well... To clear things up, I want to preface the video by saying I don't believe that any of the blame lies on my fellow YouTube creators. Knowing how rough it is to generate a feasible income off of YouTube, I can't blame any YouTuber for taking what I'm sure is an extremely enticing brand deal. Even if you're a bigger YouTuber making a livable wage, the amount of money that I've heard that they throw at you is almost too hard to turn down. Honestly, any advertisement, even to me, even with all this animosity I feel towards the game, probably gets to be a difficult decision if they're offering enough money. What's more, I believe that many of these creators that are promoting the game don't realize at all how malicious it is, and don't understand that promoting the game to their audiences is wrong. So please, don't blame any YouTubers for this, but with that out of the way, let's get into the video. Even if you're familiar with Raid due to the advertisements, you're likely unfamiliar with the gameplay. Basically, the game is a gacha-style game in which you collect and level up champions, progressing through levels that basically play themselves as you work on improving your squad. It's definitely nothing new for mobile games, and it's a formula that's proved extremely effective in the past. It's a surprisingly addictive gameplay loop, albeit one without a lot of integrity. But the problem with the game is that at a certain point, you are pressured to spend money for a chance at better champions champions, and to feel any meaningful progression in the game at all. But before I continue with Raid, it's important that I tell a story from my own life to provide meaningful context as to why this is so close to my heart. You see, in high school, me and a group of friends were extremely addicted to a game called Summoner's War. Now that's nothing crazy, because I've been addicted to a bunch of games over the span of my life, but this addiction was not the same. I've never been one to spend a lot in video games. I mean, I might buy the International Battle Pass once a year for a few cosmetics, and I buy expansions when they come out in my favorite games to unlock worthwhile content. I have absolutely no problem supporting developers who release DLC that actually adds something to the game, rather than DLC that makes you better. And that was the difference with Summoner's War. You see, Summoner's War is monetized in an extremely similar fashion to Raid. While you can progress for free, paying money earns you a chance at concrete improvement, and if you want to stay competitive, as I often do in games, you need to be spending money. Furthermore, if you're not spending money, the pace of the game slows down to an absolute crawl sucking absolutely all of the fun away until you fold and spend money again. But it gets even worse than that. The way the game allows you to unlock champions is through a loot box-esque random chance. Getting a good champion out of a scroll in Summoner's War felt like getting a knife out of CSGO Crate, or even more accurately, like hitting the jackpot on a roulette wheel. There's no denying it, this type of monetization is absolutely gambling. And while I take responsibility for my own actions, and I know that I shouldn't have been stupid enough to keep playing, it was really sad to see me and my friends spending hundreds of dollars any chance we could just to get a roll of the dice at unlocking a rare new monster, and subsequently feeling like absolute garbage if we didn't get anything cool. It was a malicious cycle. We would spend birthday money, money from summer jobs, whatever we could get our hands on just for a chance to progress. While it's my fault for playing, I blame the addictive gambling style of monetization for draining my wallet. For a 15 year old, getting a gambling addiction is a terrifying and dangerous thing. This could have easily progressed for me into a very real gambling addiction. But again, I was 15. I can't legally gamble, but I can legally play these games. And that is the crucial difference. After over a year of addiction, hiding my spending habits from my parents, and being stuck in a terrible loop of pointless money wasting, I finally built up the willpower to quit Summoner's War. And it was one of the best decisions I ever made. So now, Back to Raid. As I said, it's essentially a Summoner's War clone, it's just reframed to better fit a western audience. And when I downloaded the game to play it again, it felt like I was a gambling addict stepping back into a casino. The game has the same restrictions in place to entice, persuade, and pressure you into spending money using RNG to simulate gambling. I mean, if that's not clear enough, the company that makes the game is literally owned by a gambling firm. They are not subtle about it at all. And from my research, many people say that its style of monetization is way worse than other games like it. Here's how it works. Raid will pull you in by offering you a bunch of free stuff, getting you hooked, and once you sink your teeth in and realize how rewarding the gameplay loop can be, 
they start advertising you in-app purchases. They offer PvP, wherein players who spend will beat you 9 times out of 10, further enticing you to spend. If you play too much, you have to spend to play more. Everywhere you look, there is an option to spend, to get something quick before a sale ends, and an option to roll the dice so you can maybe get a dopamine hit from unlocking something rare. But now, onto the worst part. As you obviously know, Raid promotes their games through YouTube, specifically targeting gaming YouTubers with young audiences. Obviously, this makes sense in theory, because it is a video game, kinda. But I worry that some of the reason that they target these audiences is because they know they can get kids hooked on their version of gambling. Again, I really hope that that is not the case, but it's kinda hard to deny it. It certainly seems plausible. The reason that gambling is illegal to people under the age of 18 or 21, depending on where you live, is because the young mind is so capable of being addicted to it, and a gambling addiction is one of the most crippling addictions you can have. And if that's not enough, their marketing tactics are deceptive, as Upper Echelon Gaming put in his video attacking Raid, which you should absolutely check out by the way. He explains how the Raid ad script that is given to YouTubers is basically just a series of lies. The game is much more bland than they claim it to be, and in all honesty, it just feels like they're trying to trick people into spending money. Of course, I'm focusing on Raid today, but gacha games as a whole should not be available to teens or kids, and they certainly should not be promoting themselves to those audiences. These games are casinos under the thin veil of a video game, and they should not be promoting themselves on YouTube. Thanks to my patrons RS, Ethan, Henry, Dr. Keys, Gamer of Gold, Harmony, Nicholas and Admiral for supporting me. And a massive thanks to each and every one of you guys for watching. Until next time, this has been Meraki. Bye bye. Aww.